If you have a traffic ticket, an insurance citation, or a Class B or C misdemeanor charge, you go to a Utah Justice Court. Tonight, KSL 5 News investigates allegations that those courts themselves are out of order. Reporter Lori Pritchard uncovered a system some observers compared with the Wild Wild West. Lori. Well, the so-called Wild Wild West is big business for Utah cities and counties. Municipalities keep all the money collected in justice court. That added up to $58 million last year alone. Critics say instead of offering justice, these courts serve as cash cows. And surprisingly, our investigation found justice courts operate with very little oversight. Well, I didn't even do anything wrong. He threw me in jail for three days. We're going to put you in jail. No justice here. That's what these three Utahns have to say about justice court. Take Kimberly Beezer, cited for driving without insurance. Grabbed this paper for me to sign that I was guilty and then slapped me with a $200 fine. Problem is, this piece of paper gave Kimberly two options plead guilty or no contest. Not guilty, not an option. If she didn't agree to how the court wanted her to plea, they told her they'd issue a warrant. I thought we were going to get arrested. The kicker here, Kimberly did have insurance. It was a mix-up. When she pled her case in front of a judge, the charge was dismissed. Next up, John Oliver. He owed the court $700 in fines, pled guilty to driving with a suspended license, no insurance, and expired registration. He made his payments, though not always on time. It wasn't like I was neglecting it or anything like that. He got all caught up, showed up for his next court appearance, but the judge sent him to jail. And not just any jail, it was a holding cell next to the courtroom. Basically a closet and... That's where they left me for three days. Three days. The court docket shows Oliver's family called to see what happened to him. My family was looking for me. Dana Long Christensen's family knew where she was for 13 days. Locked up here at the Salt Lake County Jail. Behind bars for running her business, a perennial and plant nursery without a license. A violation, she says, she was appealing. It's just, you know what, there's something wrong with our country. Unfortunately, the wild, wild west is alive and well in justice courts. Kent Hart heads up the Utah Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. He's speaking for the many criminal defense attorneys KSL has spoken to who are too afraid to be in the story for fear of retribution. Without those checks and balances, we're going to have abuses. The cities are going to generate revenue. Last year alone, those revenues added up to $58 million. For cash-strapped cities and counties, the justice courts can be cash cows. Salt Lake City, the state's top justice court earner, brought in $5.6 million. West Valley City collected 3.6. Provo, Sandy, Davis County, and Utah County took in more than $2 million apiece. It's certainly in the city's best interest to get someone to plead and not contest. It's more efficient, and it's more cost effective, and it, again, boosts the revenues. Another way to boost revenue? The threat of jail. Our investigation found justice courts often use the county lockup as a debtor's prison. In other words, nonviolent people are being sent to jail where there are many violent people. KSL News obtained hundreds of thousands of Salt Lake County jail records from 2004 to date. We found the vast majority of those who are sent to jail for municipal court commit drug-related crimes, have DUIs. But some get jailed for things like jaywalking, lack of a dog license, tinted window violations. So who's watching over the state's 109 municipal court judges? Where's the oversight? Well, it's up to the State Judicial Conduct Commission to police them. But the only problem, they operate in secret. We're the only oversight of the judges for judicial misconduct. But the JCC's executive director thinks he has a quick fix to pull some municipal court judges back in line. Every courtroom should have a recording in a recording system and it should be going all the time and judges will improve because they'll stop doing some of the things they're allegedly doing now. And case in point, two defense attorneys told us about a municipal court judge who lets his court clerk preside over hearings, issue bench warrants and run drug court. Took us a few days of showing up and sure enough, 
There she was in charge. You just heard audio recordings may stop some of this. Those recordings could become a reality. Davis County Justice Court is running a pilot program on that now. We've got much more information on these cases in tomorrow's edition of the Desert News. And you can get details on the municipalities and judges involved, plus reaction to the allegations of misconduct. Wow, some extreme.